Hey guys, CE Software here and it's the second video and today I'm going to show you how to work collisions with our object which we learned how to move in the previous video using WASD keys or the directional arrow keys. If you haven't seen that video already I'll put a link in the description and in the video for you just there. If you haven't watched that video I would suggest you watch it first if you don't already know how to do it. But today we're going to crack on with doing the collisions in preparation for producing the maze which we're going to do in the final video for the pitch box. So I'm going to add a new pitch box into my form. I haven't changed anything on the form since the last video, everything's the same. So I'm going to choose an image and I've just got a picture of a fire just for something we can collide with to reset the level. Okay. So that's going to be pitch box two, pitch box one. So once you've added that in, we're going to go into the code. So within this subroutine of the key down, because we need the subroutine to check every time the key's pressed down to make sure we haven't collided anything, we're going to place it in here. We're going to do another if statement. So we're going to do if pitch box one dot bounds dot intersects with picture box two dot bounds then so this is going to check whether the bounds of picture box one crosses the bounds of picture box two which is what we want so for our maze game we can either bring up a message box which I don't really like to do because I think it stops the flow of the game what we're going to do is jump it to the beginning like I did with the cursor when you went over it jumps back to the beginning so this is what we're going to do so I'm going to do pitch box one dot top is equal to 10 picture box one dot left is equal to 10 so that means when we intersect with pitch box two with the, the uh, pitch box one is going to move to 10 10 coordinates so we'll try it out. Right, so using A key I'm going to just collide. And then we'll go off jump to the top corner. So if I collide with this side it should be exactly the same. And I've jumped back into the top corner. Okay, so that works. So the next thing we are going to do is to try a label. Obviously this is what we're going to use for the actual maze itself. You can use both, it doesn't make any any difference. Um, so we'll find a label. So we'll add a label and we'll change the colour to add on orange. Uh, we'll remove the text and change the auto size to false so we can resize it that'll do okay so now we're going to go to the code and I've removed the previous if statement that we had before for the picture box in so we've removed the picture box so that one won't work we're going to do an exactly the same if statement just using the label instead of picture box two. So we're gonna do if picture box one dot bounds dot intersects with label one oops label one oops, dot bounds then then we're just gonna add the same coordinates in again for picture box one dot top equal to 10 picture box one dot left is equal to 10 so we'll try this out so when we collide with it we jump back up to the top Yep, that's fine with me. So that works, no problem. 
labels so I think the easiest way to do it is to do a series of if statements for every label so every label is checked when you press a key down to make sure it hasn't collided with it so I'm just going to copy and paste this label a few times we'll have five I think one two three four five so we'll delete these two these are long now like that and the easiest way I can think to do is, is to rename all of these so we know which one's which so I'm just going to call the first one LBL1 LBL2 LBL3 LBL4 and LBL5 ok so now I'm going to jump back into the code and I'm basically just going to copy and paste this if statement five times so we have five of them so it's going to be LBL1 we're going to change that one to LBL2 LBL3 LBL4 and LBL5 so no matter which one we collide with we always jump back to the same place notice how I changed the name on the first label and now it changes in the actual if statement itself I don't think it used to do this in Visual Studio 2010 it does in 2012 which is quite handy it stops you from getting errors Let's, I've just noticed that there so we have one, two, three, four, and five. So we'll give this a try. So we'll collide with number three. And we jump back to the start. Collide with number one. We jump back to the start. Collide with number two. Back to the start. and collide with number 4 and number 5 when we get there that's it, so that all works fine so this is the foundation for our maze game which we'll all put together in the next video I'm going to add in a scoring system using a timer so we're going to get a score and then we'll get score deductions when we collide and different things like that tie it all together and get it all to work properly so thanks for watching subscribe like and comment and i'll see you next time